Hi, Wayne Williams here from Speaking of Horses TV, and we'd like to thank the many supporters and underwriters who make this show possible. Equicentral's Horse Care Products for the complete horse. Andis Clippers and Grooming Equipment. The best grooming technology comes from Andis. To the Stall Butler, save on shavings by up to 50% from Stall Butler. This innovative design from Stall Butler is great for use around your stable. Overland Carts, a wonderful design by the multi-purpose cart, does all types of stable functions. Overland Carts, a great supporter. Woodstar Stalls and Custom Built Stables, complete. Thanks to Woodstar and their online Design Your Own program. And One Source Nutrition, step ahead of all equine nutritional products. Thanks to One Source. Please thank all of our supporters who make Speaking of Horses TV possible. Well, hi, we're speaking of horses, and guess what? We're at the All-American Quarter Horse Congress in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and I'm really happy to have the president of the Ohio Quarter Horse Association standing here with me, Chris Donnell. Is that correct? Darnell. Darn. Chris Darnell. I'm. Chris. And Chris is also uh, has another duty. There is the Southern Bell Invitation Futurity, which was established, well, it says here, in 1994. And Chris also manages that. So give us a little insight into the Invitational, the uh, Futurity, and then how it all melds together with the Quarter Horse. Well, the Southern Bell um, is a breeder's program, and we offer classes um, around the country, and we hold classes within a class, and it's to promote breeding within the industry um, and we break the money out some goes to the um, horse owners and some goes to the stallion owners and they donate their studs and then we take that money and we put it into purses at different horse shows around the country like the Congress as well as the AQHA World Show and the Reichert Celebration, the Tom Powers. We've had shows at numerous locations around the United States really. Well I know this booth is actually my neighbor right beside my booth here at the at the Congress and uh, some of the people working the booth we've been talking on and off and a lot of those classes are running concurrently here with classes at the Congress this year. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Uh, we're having we every class of uh, the fraternity classes uh, we've had the Southern Bell Breeders classes running concurrent with them and we have a limited division which would be for the riders of um, that have won less money and uh, the one three-year-old class we have over a hundred thousand in the purse this year so we're really excited about that to have expanded our division to include limited and to have such great participation and I know I'm looking here you've got a lot of uh, various these are all studs I believe that are in the program and then you have uh, the, like you say the Riker, the AQHA World, uh, the um, Paint Horse, um, Congress and the Tom Powers, like you mentioned, and of course we're at the Congress and having a ball. So, Chris, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Now, tell everybody to be sure and hit the Congress this year, next year, or uh, this is 45. Let's let's hit it all the way up to 50. We would love to, we would love that. Just come on down, visit us, and there's lots of shopping and lots of things to do and see here. Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much. Stay with us because we're going to take you more places right here at the All-American Quarter Horse Congress in Columbus, Ohio. Well, again, we're here at the uh, All-American Quarter Horse Congress in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm really happy to be standing here with uh, not the band singer, Steve Miller, but Steve Miller of Montana Silversmiths. And you are the official buckle supplier here in many places. And, and uh, Steve, welcome. And tell us about your involvement with the Quarter Horse Congress. All right. First, I have to say that I got out of music because there's no money in it. So I got into this business because it's, it's a lot better. There's more money. Uh, the horse business is a lot more money. Right? Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's a lot more and a lot more risky yeah. even than singing uh, just kidding everyone <laughs> <laughs> anything that's recorded you know you can be liable for so right. anyway 
We started last year as the national sponsor, official buckle of the Ohio Quarter Horse Congress. And of course, we're very proud to do that. Been out here for many, many years supporting our dealers uh, here. But now we are the official buckle with the Congress logo, the Congress brand, the shield, uh, all the good stuff that makes this Congress. So we're, we're very, very proud of that and to support the industry. As you know, we're a national sponsor, American Quarter Horse Association, National Reigning Horse, Cowboy Mounted Shooter, which are all affiliated with American Quarter Horse. So we we are very, very proud of this this new addition to our family. Well, it, it's it's quite a thing, and I mean, you know, I have seen Montana Silversmith buckles for years and years. Uh, how old is the company? The company will be 40 years old in 2013, and we're getting ready to kick off a real fun campaign for next year to celebrate our 40th birthday. It's, so it's the same age as I am right now, 39. 39? Yeah. yeah. I'm in that same category, too. I tell people I've just had the 24th or 34th, an 24th anniversary of my 39th birthday, something right like that. Right. <laughs> but anyway, you guys do a great job, and you, you custom do buckles as well for, for uh, individuals or anybody, right? We do, and a lot of these buckles are custom. Customized. You have your champion buckle, which is a champion. You have your reserve champion, your top t five, your top ten, your top fifteen. You can put the place you finished on it, your class on it, so they're all customized. We make upwards of over 800 buckles for uh, the Ohio Quarter Horse Congress with the team tournament buckles that we do. And you are actually in Montana, right? We are. These are all manufactured in Columbus, Montana, about 15 feet from the Yellowstone River, literally. So it's beautiful there, beautiful product. It is our inspiration. And uh, yes, we'll make a buckle for anybody, any event, or just for your dad or your grandpa or your uncle or your mother, just to commemorate them. Well, that's great. Steve, thanks for joining me. It's, uh, thanks for asking. Oh, you're welcome. It's just one of those things that you're going to find. You know, there's all kinds of little stories at various horse events, and this is one of them right here at the Quarter Horse Congress. Stay with us. we got more coming. Thanks. Well, we're still right here at the All-American Quarter Horse Congress, and, you know, we've been talking to a lot of different breeds and disciplines that are involved in the Congress because everything they do showing wise and especially horse breed wise they kind of dovetail together and that's the case here that we are in the uh, booth for the palomino breeders horse breeders of america yes. and uh, i'm sitting here next to the general manager and from actually from Tulsa. From Tulsa. Scully Drive, is that right? Yeah. Scully Drive? I, Scully I, Drive. Yep. I have been a member, I should remember that. <laughs> yep. But um, I mean, you've had a booth here for the entire Congress, and we're sort of getting toward the end of it now. But uh, give us a little brief history, if you would, on the um, history of the Palomino Horse Breeders Association, and then a little bit on the dovetailing into AQHA. Okay. Well, we started in uh, 1943 in Mineral Wells, Texas, um, to just kind of promote the Palomino horse, the breeding of the Palomino horse, and to continue the purity of that bloodline. We um, register about 90% of our horses are quarter horses, and therefore that's how we kind of dovetail in with AQHA. And since most of the horses here at the Congress are quarter horses, it's, it's uh, just a great place for us to promote our breed. Now, as it is with, say, buckskin, Buckskin is a color breed as well as Palomino is a color breed. So uh, the vast majority are quarter horses. Yes, that's correct. But we also register horses that are um, solid bred paint horses, um, solid Appaloosa horses, um, as well as Arabian horses and so on. But you still have, you have your state or regional affiliates. Mm -hmm, we do. Uh, I used to be a member of the Wisconsin group. Uh, we have those, you have those affiliates, and you have your own world show, so you completely do your own thing as Palomino as well. That's correct. We, we um, offer a wide variety of places for people to participate with their Palomino horse. And uh, you're moving the world show this next year. We are. We're moving our world show from Tulsa, Oklahoma, where it's been for about 30 years, to Tunica, Mississippi. It's a nice facility in Tunica. If you want to go see the horses, see the Palominos, and... Uh, Maybe hit a casino, too. <laughs> That's true. There are lots of casinos, yeah. yeah. Well, since you've got a golden horse, you want to go pick up a few golden coins <laughs> yeah. at the same time, right? That's correct, yes. 
Well, it's a great organization. I have been a member. Uh, I have shown a little bit. Not that I was a big sh I'm not trying to fool anybody here. I played around the parade class and that stuff, but, but really enjoyed it. It's a great organization, and, and encourage everybody, if you've got a yellow horse, if you've got a Palomino, it doesn't matter if it's quarter horse. It can be other breeds as long as it meets the criteria for being a Palomino. You can still register the horse. So, so do so, and have a good time with your horses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now that's uh, phba.com. It's palominohba.com. 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 Check them out. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. We got more highlights coming right here. We're in Columbus, Ohio, on Speaking of Horses at the All American Quarter Horse Congress. Hi, Wayne Williams here from Speaking of Horses TV, and we'd like to thank the many supporters and underwriters who make this show possible. Equicentral's horse care products for the complete horse. Andis Clippers and grooming equipment. The best grooming technology comes from Andis. To the stall butler, save on shavings. Buy up to 50% from stall butler. This innovative design from stall butler is great for use around your stable. Overland Carts, a wonderful design by the multi-purpose cart, does all types of stable functions. Overland Carts, a great supporter. Woodstar Stalls and Custom Built Stables, complete, thanks to Woodstar and their online Design Your Own program. And One Source Nutrition, step ahead of all equine nutritional products, thanks to One Source. Please thank all of our supporters who make Speaking of Horses TV possible. Well, here we are, Speaking of Horses. We're at the All-American Quarter Horse Congress, and I'm really happy to be standing here with Denny Chapman. Now, Denny's uh, gained a lot of fame here in the last few years. Uh, Cowboy-mounted shooting, you've done very well. Uh, if you watched on the History Channel a year or two ago, Top Shots, Denny was, uh, you got way down in the finals there for a while because I know we were watching to see how well you were doing. But uh, welcome, Denny, first of all. And let's start out by saying, how did you do this year at the finals? Well, Wayne, first of all, it's a pleasure to see you again. I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, we just returned from the CMSA World Finals in Amarillo, and uh, it was really fun for me because I'm campaigning a new horse for a client, a stallion, and this is a little different. We're starting to see uh, some bloodlines and some, some things that people are looking for in my sport of mounted shooting, like specific bloodlines, uh, cow horse uh, um, crossed with uh, race blood now, and I've got a great little stallion, Mr. Coco Bueno Rumba, a uh, seven-year-old, uh, really beautiful horse, a, gr a beautiful buckskin, grulia colored horse that's gaining a lot of attention. Uh, he is now qualified for the AQHA World Championships, which will be in Houston in March because of our showing at, uh, at the World Finals. He did pretty good. Uh, we still have some seasoning to go because this was only about his third big match, but he did, he did great and we're looking forward to campaigning him next year. And one of my other horses won a world title there at the, wow. at the World, so uh, doing good. We're doing steaming good. right along. <laughs> Well, I know we are standing in the Stagecoach West booth at the Quarter Horse Congress, and you're a guest here for the next couple of days in their booth so people can meet and greet. And also, if you're not aware of it, that now through the Quarter Horse Congress, they now recognize and have a couple of big days of cowboy-mounted shooting here. Yeah, it's a really big deal for the All-American Quarter Horse Congress to debut the inaugural Quarter Horse Congress uh, cowboy-mounted shooting competition, which is going to be Sunday. I believe that it'll be the 28th, which will be the last day of Congress. I believe here and it's a really big deal for the CMSA you know they've gained a lot of attention through corporate sponsorship they've got Wrangler on board heart trailers some really big recognizable names and uh, as you can see I kind of look like NASCAR I've, I've got a lot of sponsors too but it's important you know to, to promote those people who are supporting this sport and our sport is still by the numbers the fastest growing equestrian sport in the in the nation right now and and it's the and it's the yeah. most fun sport I it is and I what I'm just thinking what was going through my mind when you said NASCAR, I can see you saying, yeah, my horse, the Sun Coast Shaving <laughs> Seminole Wellness horse, he was doing well. <laughs> That's exactly right. And, you know, it's important to uh, to promote the, the people who promote our sport. And I'm pretty picky when it comes to the, the care of my horses, and I'm approached by a lot of different companies. And uh, I'm really proud to fly the colors of the companies that, that I use and keep my horses happy and healthy. Now, there's something else that you've got going here. We're standing in front of two nice saddles, and these are your signature models. Tell us a little about this. 
Well, you know, the neat thing about our sport is that it's kind of demanded the need for special equipment. Uh, it's not exactly barrel racing. It's not exactly cow horse stuff, but it's a combination of a lot of different things. And we need saddles that have specific qualities for, for us as competitors. We need a deep seat saddle that'll kind of keep us down close contact to the horse, but we need security also because we're running really fast, turning really hard, and uh, doing all these maneuvers like barrel racers do, and, and working cow horse people, rain cow horse, but we're shooting guns at the same time. <laughs> so sometimes it's hard to think about sitting down deep on your horse. So we've designed these saddles with uh, a nice deep seat, close contact to the horse, uh, and uh, they're, they're just taking off like wildfire. This is the base version of the Denny Chapman all-around uh, uh, mounted shooting saddle. Uh, it is actually reinforced. You can actually dally off this saddle and use it for ranch work as well. And as you can see, Wayne, this one is kind of the fancier version. This oh, is yeah. kind of the premier version. That's why I stood by this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for folks who just want to look a little nicer, and you know, both of these are handmade, hand-tooled. They're not factory-made saddles, and we're really proud of that fact. Well, I would, I would go for this one because I would not be well in the shooting, so I'd have to look good in the saddle, right? I go for fashion, not form. <laughs> you know, that's an interesting point. Uh, not everybody looks like me out there. You know, I'm shoot on a pro level and represent my sponsors. But a neat thing about our sport is uh, it's Americana. It's a little bit of history. And you see some guys out there and ladies looking like they came right out of Lonesome Dove. And right. they're wearing the wild rags and the right. wrist cuffs and the woolly chaps. And it's, yeah. it's really neat. And that's half the fun of it. It is. Hey, Denny, it's been a pleasure to talk with you, and uh, we wish you well. And uh, I know you got a lot of things moving on the horizon, but it's always fun to catch up with you. And because we go back quite a few years when you were first, you were working at Kentucky Horse Park and right. developing things, and so it's really nice to see everything progress like it has. Thank you, Wayne. We look forward to uh, seeing more of Speaking of Horses TV. We'll do it. Thanks, Denny. Right here at the All American Quarter Horse Congress. to be standing here in the Australian Stock Saddle Company booth with Colin Dangard. And Colin is uh, one of the principal owners or the owner of the Australian Stock Saddle Company. And But he's got a book out. And, of course, you're from Australia, so welcome. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, love this place, <laughs> except for the rain. <laughs> yeah, it's been raining this morning, but... Uh, we're here not to talk saddles necessarily this time, but we're here to talk about a book called Talking with Horses that you have out, and it's a historical novel that you describe. So tell us a little bit about this book. Yeah, Wayne, well, this is a book about, uh, about, really it's about the history of the horse. The horse is 55 million years old. Man is 5 million years old. <clears throat> and uh, the horse changed very little over that time except physically, but its brain remained the same. Contrary to us, it's, uh, we, uh, we developed enormous layers of brains and uh, our, our, our physiology also changed somewhat. Um, so it's how we learn to communicate with the horse. And today there are such people, people who still use that primary old primitive brain that we all have, but modern man, as man developed, developed layers of brain which buried that old brain. but. Autistic people still have that brain, and they, it's still a, uh, a primary uh, a cognizant function for them. We don't use that brain hardly ever at all, which makes them a little um, um, different to us, so to speak. But my, my, uh, my heroine is a young girl, an 18-year-old autistic girl, who, because of her condition, can communicate with a horse. So in that context, she uh, does wonderful things with her horse called Tower. Um, and uh, becomes a national sensation in the jumping circuit, saves the family ranch, has a romance in the hills of Malibu, <laughs> and uh, like, all, uh, like all autistic people, she has a whole fantasy world. And in her fantasy world, she rides with Attila the Hun and falls in love with the lieutenant of Attila the Hun. <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can actually mix all of the storylines in here, so you can bring all the facts of the different uh, different stages of history with the horse into the story that way. Correct. I've, I've woven actual history into a story, a fictional story about such a girl, uh, and um, that way I'm, <clears throat> I'm able to reveal the enormous importance the horse has had in the life of and the evolution of man. Uh, and the interesting thing about this is that. Uh, the horses, we've uh, 
the horse is that old and we are that old, uh, but the horse has only been ridden for 5,000 years, that's all. But we've known the horse for millions of years, so I, f I find that really strange that it's only just like yesterday that we started riding the horse. And uh, the funny thing about that too in my research, I unearthed the fact that uh, women were the first people to uh, ride horses, the first humans to ride horses. The Samartians in the uh, year 3500 BC. And because of that, they became the most powerful uh, army in uh, the southern steeps of Russia where they were. Well, the horse truly has uh, had its effect on man all through history. And, and autistic people uh, seem to have a more open mind to uh, have that telepathic type communication with the horse and they just seem to understand each other better. And those are all factual things we know about. So it looks like a very intriguing book and I guess you're doing very well in sales, right? Yeah, sales are going very well on Barnes and Nobles and Amazon.com and, uh, and I'm selling it well on my website and I've uh, now, uh, now I have to write a series of these books so I'm on uh, number two already, the sequel and I've sold the movie rights to the sequel but I haven't sold the movie rights to the first one but you know me Wayne, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me show this to you real again. It's called Talking with Horses. There is the book. You can get it at Barnes and & Noble and where else? And uh, AussieSaddle.com. That's my own website, AussieSaddle.com, A-U-S-S-I-E-S-A-D-D-L-E.com. .com. Well, Colin, thank you very much, and good luck with the book and, and the movie rights, and uh, it looks like a fascinating read. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Wayne. It's a blast. <laughs> and here we are. You never know what you're going to find next here at the Quarter Horse Congress. We're on Speaking of Horses. Stay with us. Thank you. I'm really happy to be sitting next to Diane Eppers with the National Snaffle Bit Association, NSBA. And, uh, you know, I, in announcing all of the shows and things I do, I, I periodically am running into NSBA all the time. But since Diane is the executive director, she can tell us about it. So tell us how you fit in with all of these other shows, the associations that represent or recognize NSBA and how those classes, how they meld together. Um, one of the things that NSBA is doing with many of our alliance partners is we are offering dual approved events at a lot of the major events. So what that means is if the show is going to offer, let's say as an example, Junior Western Pleasure, NSBA will also dual approve that class so an exhibitor can go in the class and show for their breed points, but if they're also entered in the NSBA portion and they're an NSBA member, then they can get additional bonuses for participating. NSBA awards um, additional prize money for NSBA members. Uh, we have show perks. We've got some additional values. And we also have a program called Smart Points for our youth. So there's a lot of additional value at showing in the NSBA portion of the class. Yeah, there definitely is. And I was sitting here a while ago, you were talking to some customers in your booth here at the Congress. Tell us a bit about this. Uh, I, I believe it's the smart points, but it's how the uh, students can get into the scholarship program. Yes, um, our program is called Smart Points, and it's for um, youth riders age 18 years of age and under, and we're extremely excited about it. It's um, about two years old, and it's quite innovative. Um, when you are showing in an NSBA class and you're a youth exhibitor, you're eligible for incentive money, and this is kind of an industry um, setting standard because most of the other associations have never offered incentive money for the children's classes. Our incentive program allows a youth exhibitor to earn money that is held in a scholarship account for that youth until they reach age 18 and, and um, age out of youth competition. So um, the payout in that program pays in the nine and under small fry classes, um, which you'll see are quite popular at the Paint Association, those approved classes, as well as the apps. Um, and NSBA also offers nine and under division, as well as the novice division, which again, it's kind of unusual for there to be incentives in novice youth classes. So in order for someone to be eligible to earn the incentive, pro incentive money for the smart points, they need to nominate the individual, the child, it's a one-time $25 fee, and then they will be showing, they need to show a horse that has an NSBA Stallion Incentive Fund license 
and show in a youth class. Last year, our payout for the Youth Smart Points program was $81.64 per NSBA point. So that's that's a great incentive program for a lot of the, the youth and, and definitely for the parents to uh, have a reason to participate in the NSBA division. Oh, it's really, I, I can just think, it's great. I mean, they're, they're having fun showing their horses. They're getting all the right kind of of, of training tools from being around horses, you know, the, the responsibilities and the things of showing and taking care of the stock. And they're making some money for uh, oh, yeah. education as well. I think it's a great program. It is a great program, and we're quite excited. Um, again, it's it's only about two years old, and in the last two years, we've had we have had two children. One received a check for twenty seven hundred, um, and, and that she was able to take off to go to college. Another youth child received a check for thirty five hundred, and those were children who only had two years to participate. So I'm excited about. Um, I have a granddaughter who's eleven years old, and actually my family was raised in the industry. So I'm real excited about of the, a lot of the young blood that have an opportunity to still um, get rewarded for showing horses and still have that incentive money for college. Well, that's great. So if people want to learn more about NSBA, what's the website? NSBA is at www.nsba.com, and we're located in Gurney, Illinois, and we'd love to have you go to our website, look around. If you've got any questions, pick up the phone, give us a call. That's great. We're here at the Congress with Speaking of Horses, Diane. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to see you. All right. Stay with us. we got more coverage here at the All-American Quarter Horse Congress. Hi. Wayne Williams here from Speaking of Horses TV, and we'd like to thank the many supporters and underwriters who make this show possible. Equicentral's horse care products for the complete horse. Andis clippers and grooming equipment. The best grooming technology comes from Andis. To the stall butler, save on shavings. Buy up to 50% from stall butler. This innovative design from stall butler is great for use around your stable. Overland Carts, a wonderful design by the multi-purpose cart, does all types of stable functions. Overland Carts, a great supporter. Woodstar Stalls and Custom-Built Stables, complete, thanks to Woodstar and their online Design Your Own program. And One Source Nutrition, step ahead of all equine nutritional products, thanks to One Source. Please thank all of our supporters who make Speaking of Horses TV possible.